Well, welcome to another Wealthy and Wise video. And we're in part two of our series on capitalism. I think maybe what we ought to do in this one is to start off by defining the most basic differences between capitalism and socialism. Now, keep in mind the lines have been blurred dramatically over the years where it's almost hard to distinguish where the line's drawn or if the line's been completely erased. Let's see if we can figure out this as we go along. Now, capitalism in its raw and unadulterated form basically entails three distinct characteristics. These three characteristics that through all the bickering and all the arguing by our founding fathers, and after all the disagreements, these three characteristics withstood the debate and arguments and prevailed in what became America. These principles were so important to the founders that they signed their lives away and fought for independence from an overbearing and overreaching British government. A fight that they never should have won, outnumbered, outtrained, and talk about underdogs, but they fought with their heart, with grit, with blood, of course, and we won. So the three basic tenets are written in the Constitution as this, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Notice there's nothing in these three characteristics that says it's going to be perfectly fair, perfectly equal. There's a guarantee of success, a guarantee of a job, and then, of course, no government control. Now, we tend to forget that these first three characteristics were the reasons our founders left Britain. It was all about freedom and to pursue that freedom any which way you wanted to with no limitations. You know, it was a risk to come to America. You packed up what worldly good you had, got on a ship, likely spending your last dime, and you risked everything with the hope that you'd survive in this new country. There was no safety net, no guarantees, no one to fall back on but you and your family. It's a lot like many countries still are today. It's kind of symbolic of what capitalism is, or at least what it was. It's the opportunity to take a risk and build something better for yourself, for your family, and even your community, all based on the premise that by making or building something that others want or need, you serve them. And in turn, that can build your wealth independently of government intervention. But it's because you did something to benefit others before you were benefited. Along with life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness came a few other massive additions to the founding documents. Number one is private property rights. The right to own property and never have it confiscated or taken from you. This includes your home, business, and other investment assets. The second is legal protection, meaning the presumption of innocence and due process. Now, those are topics I'm going to let someone else explore. The main thing is we have rights, and those rights indicate we are presumed innocent. Now, that's a big deal in a newly formed legal system. Lastly, and maybe most importantly, limited government. This is where our country has taken a bad turn. The regulation, the taxation, the intervention, picking winners and losers, none of which was supposed to be so burdensome, yet they are. Okay, now let's contrast this with, with socialism. The easiest way to describe socialism is kind of the opposite side of what the founders had in mind. It's where government takes control and intervenes in business, pricing, wages, and of course taxation. If it's not outright control, as suggested for the likes of energy companies and healthcare, it's certainly overreaching regulation, price and wage fixing, and essentially controlling what a business can and can't do. Both production and pricing are controlled by government, determining how much production and at what price a product or service is sold to society. Competition would be minimal, if any, as other businesses cannot easily be started to compete even if someone had a better idea or solution that would benefit their customers. This in turn puts prices and output in control of bureaucrats who know very little about your business. Now at the end of the row are the workers. Everyone's paid equally and they have a cradle to grave protection provided by the government. There's no incentive to be a better employee, to work harder, to climb the corporate ladder, to improve oneself to be a leader, as everyone is essentially looked at as the same. This is the worker bee mentality, the drone employees that simply work for the government entity with no hope for future success. Russia was a prime example of this, assigned jobs, assigned housing, drones waiting to die. 
What makes this system all the worse is it puts government power and capital under their control. History's proven this is where government masses way too much greed and thirst for power. It's dangerous to give government that much power and control over its citizens. Why have we not learned this lesson yet? We keep revisiting the very reasons America was, you know, started and why they bailed out on Britain in the first place. Do we not teach history in school anymore? Now, I know we do. It's just reformed history where we just trash the founding fathers and their, you know, faults. I'm sure, they weren't perfect guys. Look, the Soviet Union failed. And this is exactly why Venezuela is suffering poverty and a tyrannical rule right now. Just even as you're watching this video, it's happening in our day and time. Will we ever learn? Now listen, we get some attractive, charismatic, energetic politicians whose ignorance is beyond belief and the minions and the media that follow and lap up every word spewed out of their mouths just shocks me because of this. It's nothing new. Socialism has been tried over and over again. Do we have to go through the fall of America before it's shown once again that it can't work? Well, as we go through these next series of videos, I hope they'll help you get a better sense. And if nothing else, awaken you and awaken me to what's going on so we can avoid this catastrophe. Now, I hope you join in in the conversation. Make a comment below if you're on the video. If you have any thoughts or questions, send them to questions at wisemoneytools.com. We'll get them answered just as quick as we can. In the meantime, I hope that this is going to be helpful and enjoyable. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, make sure that you never miss one of these videos or podcasts. Well, until next time, have a great week. Take care.